Hey guys, welcome back to BMW Blog and welcome to the North American launch of the new BMW iX3. We've talked about the car quite a bit when it comes to the product side, but today we want to focus on sustainability. And to learn more about that, I feel me, Niels Haas, the VP of Sustainability for BMW Group. Did I get that title right? Yeah. I always struggle with the titles. They're either too short or too long, but I got this one right. First question relates to iX3 product and sustainability. The iX3 is the first new class A production car. From a sustainability perspective, what makes this SUV different than the outgoing models that you might have, either BATH or ICE, and what have you learned from other BMW EVs? I think uh, what we did different this time is we started with the design for circularity in mind. So we always already had the vision circular, if you remember. The so it was on one, one uh, principle we had in mind right in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, you come to different products. So um, we developed in another way, and uh, we, we look, looked in a, in a new way on each and every component to see if there are ways to reduce the CO2 footprint. Okay, so one thing that stood out actually in the press release also, but also I heard it today, is the fact that the new iX3 carbon footprint is one third lower than its predecessor. It's actually 42%. 42%, percent. Than, okay. So even more. <laughs> So what were the biggest levers that made this reduction possible? Yeah, it's, it's really easy. If okay. we analyze the, the car without taking any measures, 90% mm -hmm. of the CO2 emissions are coming from the batteries. Okay. The biggest amount, 50% mm -hmm. almost. Then steel, aluminum, and thermoplastics. Okay. So these are the four groups you have to take a, a closer view on. Okay. Now, there's another figure part of these very lengthy press releases, which I always love. It's one of them is that says that the iX3 reaches carbon break even in about 20,000 kilometers under the EU grid mix. But how does this number change in countries where electricity is still coal dominated? That's why the 20,000 on average. So with the renewable energies, you have okay. like 17,500 kilometers. And with the European Union energy mix, where the coal is in there, mm -hmm. um, you have uh, the 21,500 uh, kilometers. Okay. So the break-even point varies depending on the type of energy you use. Moving on, the next one. Of course, secondary materials, and we've seen here today, you have a full display on that, and we've talked about this in the past as well, clearly uses a lot of them. Like, for example, aluminum, plastics, even fishing nets. What challenges did your team face in integrating these materials without compromising quality or safety. Yeah, that's the, the, the main point. We, we always want to achieve the same quality and the same durability and the same design yeah. and surfaces than with the primary materials. And so in the development, we're finding ways how to integrate these or, or handle, for example, contaminations of the material in the recycling process and how we can still remain our quality. And what about safety? Because I guess that's always an important topic if you're using secondary materials and especially the plastic, people always worry about safety. Is that something that anybody should be concerned with the new iX3 when it comes to No, definitely using? not. We're assuring that the quality is the same. So that uh, the durability, the quality, and the strength of the material is all the same. Otherwise, we wouldn't do it. Can you also talk a little bit about the um, end-of-life recycling and dismembling? I mean, I've, I was at a dismantling center in Munich quite a few times. I've seen the process that you currently have. But are there any other changes that you expect to see in that process? I think it's really important what we did in this car is uh, with a design for uh, dismantling. So reducing dismantling time is essential okay. to make the recycling in the end profitable. Okay. Because you only create the business if uh, it's profitable and there's a business case. Okay. Now, of course, we're going to stay with this topic. So recycling and second life use of battery materials are often talked about, but less often scaled. How close is BMW to making large-scale battery recycling a reality? And what role does the BMW iX3 play in this roadmap? Yeah, we're actually the recycling techniques are very important because you have to find ways how to easily as you have to remove the battery easily and then you have to find a way how the recycling gets really fast and you don't have to disassemble it for example in the best case you shred it and you can sort it afterwards and if you automate this progress and scale it that's the way to go okay now there is another um, thought on this as well which i've seen quite a bit by doing research on this one especially around the energy intensity of recycling itself. 
Does BMW calculate whether recycling actually saves more CO2 than using virgin materials? And how do you ensure the net benefit? Yes, that's why we do it. So uh, the recycled material is a primary for reducing the CO2 footprint, mm -hmm. but also to reduce the, the need of primary materials. So uh, we're taking a look on the whole supply chain uh, and all the phases, so supply chain production, use phase and recycling. And all this sums up to the life cycle value of CO2. Okay, so um, if you look at the BMW iX2 also as a global car, how do you adapt sustainability messaging and practices for markets that are completely different, like China versus the US, especially where the regulations are different as well? I think the sustainability is deeply anchored in our strategy for BMW. So it doesn't matter in which country we are, uh, that's, we stick to our plan. And the messages might, might be a little bit different, okay. but the story is the same. Sustainability is not free, right? I mean, clearly it can add cost because you're doing new processes, new materials, and all of that. When it comes to the BMW iX3, are you absorbing most of that investment or is that being passed on to the customer? It's like the development of the car always uh, costs an amount of money. So if you start early in the process of integrating uh, the recycled materials, for example, um, then you won't have more costs at the end. So um, it, you, you haven't the first investment, but you have it with all the components you develop. Beyond carbon emissions, what other sustainability KPIs is BMW measuring in the new classic? For example, water usage, waste reduction, or biodiversity impact? Right now we are primarily tracking the CO2 emissions. That's our main, main target and our main goal. And we have the other KPIs in mind, but we are not reporting them right now. Okay. Gotcha, perfect. I was a little bit ahead of the game with that one. Okay. <laughs> uh, forward looking a little bit. Uh, BMW's goal is net zero by 2050, if I recall correctly. What role does the BMW iX3 play in reaching that milestone? And what lessons from this SUV will filter into future models like the upcoming i3 sedan, I believe, or any other future SUVs? Yeah, it's in the, the Neue Klasse whole, it's a whole architecture. So every uh, car that will come uh, will we use the same base principles. So from the Neue Klasse family, uh, we can expect the same uh, sustainability facts and results. With new models, okay. Yeah. AI, very uh, hot topic today. Everybody uses that word. I don't always agree with that because I feel like it's been around for a while, but now it's been a, it's a very hot commodity. How do you see AI shaping the sustainability story for BMW in the next decade? Yeah, I think it, it will get important because if you, for example, have to report uh, CO2 for every single vehicle, mm -hmm. specific vehicle, then you need new ways of calculating this because you have to estimate between uh, different models you can really calculate and then have to make an estimation between. And I think that uh, these uh, AI or uh, data models can really help us to, to handle the complexity. Gotcha. Now, we've talked a little bit about, you know, the principles of circular economy, but maybe let's touch a little bit more on that also when it comes to the future. How do you, how do you feel like that's going to shape also the sustainability of BMW? Because we've seen the iVision circular and that's, you know, the ideal product, right? But how close can you get to that basically uh, when, it, when it comes to circular? Yeah, we talked about it. If you, we have our, our target for reaching net zero in 2050. And now you have to to look back uh, w w what measures are necessary to reduce the CO2 footprint to get there. And so on this way, we will have more and more recycling content needed, renewable energy needed, and so on. And also, you have to think about concepts, battery sizes, and so on in the end. Has the new class A changed your interaction with suppliers? Do you demand more of them? Did you have to work with them to really adapt to this new reality or having a full EV, which is also quite sustainable? Yeah. I think it's very important to, uh, to col collaborate on this topic because BMW cannot decide uh, on its own uh, where, for example, the steel industry or whatever is going to develop. So we need corporations to find ways to, to uh, find solutions and then it can only be done together. It's not, BMW cannot do it on its own and the supplier can do it on its own. It's always a combination. When you're looking at the sustainability not market, but maybe like the entire landscape sustainability. Do you see any innovations that are exciting that applies to the car industry? 
In the recycling. In the recycling process. Yeah. For example, if you take our, um, it's called Turbogus uh, rims, okay. aluminum rims, yeah. with a new production principle, mm -hmm. and uh, there you have uh, new degrees of freedom in the design. You can, for example, put letters in there, and uh, you can dif completely different shapes than today, okay. with uh, lower costs, uh, higher uh, secondary raw material quotas, and less CO2. Mm -hmm. Now, batteries clearly are, are such a hot topic, not only because they're needed in an electric car, but also from a sustainability perspective. Also, Do you see any potential improvements when it comes to battery recycling and all of that? I'm actually not the battery expert for yeah. the next generation, so that's really hard to answer okay. what the next te technology step uh, will be. But our job from the sustainability side is to find different ways for graphite, for example, okay. or also for the uh, steel and aluminum in the batteries. Uh, to reduce the footprint gotcha. and there are different ways to achieve this and next thing is the energy density so if you mm -hmm. get a higher energy density you also need less material that's yeah. another way to go mm -hmm. uh, and the question uh, if the ranges of the cars will still grow in the future mm -hmm. or if they stick on, on a certain level gotcha. this will help too as well yeah very interesting Finally, the last question more for let's say a BMW hardcore enthusiast you know or all-time customers What's the one sustainability story about the iX3 you want them to know that isn't obvious on the spec sheet or any press release? For example, the leather-free uh, interior. Okay. Because you don't feel it, you don't if you touch it, you won't think it's an artificial material. Like Veganza, so everybody, for example. Everybody, Veganza, mm -hmm. and also the Econier, for example, in the, the textile seat mm -hmm. in which we have in Europe. Yeah. And uh, I think it's, it's funny because you would never guess that this is artificial and that it's not a real leather. Yeah. It feels better. Yeah. And so that's kind of, in fact, you don't actually realize it. Yeah, and that's interesting you say that because when I sat in the car for the first time uh, a few months ago, back in June, I um, actually, I was there with Oliver Heimer and I asked him, is this leather? And I consider myself some of an expert when it comes to BMW cars, you know, and honestly, I couldn't tell if that was Veganza or it was actually leather, and it was yeah. Veganza. You yeah. know, I haven't had a chance to see the new leather, but that felt pretty good, honestly, and very, very close to that. So, you see, that's a good that fact. That would mean you, you don't see it on the first view, you don't feel it, you, you think, oh, that's real leather, but it isn't. Yeah. Now, to end with this, tell me, what's, what's the next step in your journey towards a more sustainable future? I think this, the share of electric vehicle is one, one big lever for yeah. reduction. The use of renewable energies mm -hmm. uh, wherever possible is mm -hmm. a big lever to do. Yeah and to constantly work on our goals to achieve net zero in the next years. Okay, well, Niels, thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. And I guess we'll see you in the future with more sustainability topics. Definitely. Thank you. Thank you very much.